Hey everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House, and today we're going to look at setting up weather alerts and radar in Home Assistant. So I live in what is known as typically the edge of Tornado Alley here in the United States. It's an area of the Midwest that has the highest probability of getting tornadoes during the spring and early summer season. In addition, we're one of the areas in the United States that get the most thunderstorms every year. So getting notified in advance of an oncoming storm both helps me get all of my outdoor stuff secured so it doesn't blow away and also help and help getting the family dog prepared for the oncoming storm. So I, like most people, have alerts set up on their mobile phone to let me know if a storm is coming during the year. So I like to take that one step further with some integrations in Home Assistant. It's also nice when I travel to be able to see alerts for what's happening here at home. I even have it set up to send out alerts via my Google Homes during waking hours for things like thunderstorms and tornado watches during the summer and heavy snows during the winter. And at night for things like tornado warnings. So in today's video, we're gonna look at the forecast integrations and alternative data sources. We're also gonna look at creating a weather radar camera so that you can display weather radar in your home assistant instance how to set up data sources and components for alerts using the National Weather Service alerting custom component. Now, if you're in a country outside of the United States, you'll have to find an alert that works for you, but there's a ton available in both the built-in integrations and also the custom components that are available for Home Assistant. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right, so built into Home Assistant, when you first set it up, you will automatically get a, some forecast data that comes from the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. So this data is pretty good, but if you're looking for more of a local source, there are a ton of integrations that are available um, from the AccuWeather one, National Weather Service for here in the United States, uh, the Dark Sky integration, which still does work if you happen to have an active API key, but if you don't have an API key, it's no longer available and will probably stop working towards the end of this year or early next year. So you can use the link here below to look at the different integrations that are available for weather. And this allows you to adjust which forecast system that you use. In my system, I currently use both the National Weather Service and the Dark Sky Forecasting for weather data. Uh, and you can use that and change your weather data and then just adapt the weather card to the different um, weather data entity, which of course, if you're using forecast, has to be prepended with weather dot whatever the name of the entity is. So again, the default one works pretty well for anywhere in the world, but if you're looking for something that's more specific to your home location, you can jump into the integrations page and find a different one for you. All right, so in order to get a weather radar in your home assistant instance, all we have to do is grab an animated image from the weather underground and, and display that as a camera in home assistant. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the weather underground slash radar and that'll bring us up to the radar maps. And of course, mine is selected as United States. Uh, and you have the option of selecting the entire United States. Uh, you can also select different regions. So in my case, I'm gonna scroll down here to Salina, Kansas, which is uh, closer to where I am. And then I can click on the Kansas City area. And then you'll see a live weather radar map here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. This will show what it looks like for animated. You can also select what type of map you like to use for your camera. Uh, you can, if you're into weather, you can select different, a different type of weather map. You can also zoom in to closer into your region. All right, so if you scroll down here to the bottom, you can select some other options uh, like storm tracks. You can see how you can, it'll label which uh, storm cells are tracking, which direction they're heading, up to five or up to 10. You can also have it outline severe storms smooth the map if you'd like, include rain and snow, or lightning. Uh, I like to, the next thing I like to do is go down here to the bottom and select the number of frames, and up at somewhere around 20 frames. That way you get a little bit more data in your map than you would otherwise. You can also select how fast that particular map moves. So you click the play button, it'll give you a nice preview of what that map's gonna look like in Home Assistant. So you'll get this entire area bordered by black in Home Assistant. So I've gone ahead and punched mine into 200%, and then you'll click on this Save Image button down here. When you do that, it's gonna prompt you for an image, but what we actually care about is the URL up here at the top, because we can use this URL and feed it into a camera and Home Assistant, and then it'll pull down a live version of this map at all times. So let's go ahead and grab that, and we'll drop it into Notepad. 
And then let's go ahead and head into our Home Assistant configs so we can edit the YAML and add the camera to our configuration. All right, so here's a config file from my, my Home Assistant test environment. Since I don't actually have a separate separate camera file, I'm gonna go ahead and just add it to my configuration.yaml. So this is what the code is gonna look like. This is the, what a generic camera looks like in Home Assistant. Pretty simple, uh, under the camera, platform is generic, still image URL, and then you have to give it a name. So we're gonna take that URL, grab this URL for the GIF image, and then we're gonna paste it right here under still image URL, and then hit save. Go back over to Home Assistant and we'll go ahead and restart. So that Home Assistant's back, let's head over to Developer Tools and we'll look for Camera. And there's our new entity. And there we go, that's the same image that we had over here. So every time this camera is called on, it'll go up and bring up a new version of that image. So you don't need to refresh it or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new view, call it Weather, and Card Picture Entity. And then entity, doesn't really matter what the entity is, but the camera entity, we're going to select this one and delete that image path. And then there we go. Not sure why it's in black and white, but there's that, there's a weather radar image. And then you can, of course, put whatever you want down here as an entity, or you can just remove it. It doesn't really need to be there. It's just this particular card has a weather dot. It requires, to, you actually have to have an entity for a picture entity card. That's the best one to display a camera image similar to this. All right, so now that we have a, uh, a weather radar image, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next step where we're gonna set up the uh, National Weather Service alerts. So uh, on this, kind of the main section of the video today, we're going to be doing um, setting up the National Weather Service alerts custom component, and then we're gonna parse that data and use it to return just the top alert from the National Weather Service for my, our particular region. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what region that we are in for the National Weather Service. So to do that, let's head over to alerts.weather.gov and that'll bring you to this very old looking webpage uh, from the National Weather Service. If you scroll down, it'll give you a list of all of the states and territories in the United States and also give you the option for zone list or county list. So if I scroll down here to Missouri, I can click on county list and that's gonna give me a list of all the counties here in Missouri. That lets me scroll down and find the one for Jackson County, which is what Kansas City and its uh, metropolitan area is in. And that is MOC 095. That is the region that I am in. So right now, there are no watches or warnings available for my area. So if you wanted to test this with an area that actually has active alerts, we can go ahead and back up a couple pages and scroll to the top here. There's a national all option. Click that national all option, it's gonna show you all of the active weather alerts throughout the United States and territories. So if you wanted to find one that had a particular type of warning you're trying to find, um, so for example, flash flood, rip current, I know there was somewhere in Maryland that had a, um, a warning earlier today, but you could always look for thunderstorm. So there's a severe, severe thunderstorm watch here. You can click that and it's gonna tell you it's in Arizona, you can say Grand County, Arizona. So if we go back to alerts, Arizona, back to the alerts menu, scroll down to Arizona, county list, and then we see Graham is AZC009. Now we could feed this into the same component and use that for testing if you wanted to test if there's an active alert or not. So you'll be seeing me probably test this after I set, show you how to set it up for my particular area. So going back to the list, we'll go to Missouri, county list, and for Jackson County, again, it's MOC 095. Now again, this is important because we need to feed this into the component. So we'll leave this page pulled up and let's go ahead and jump over to the custom component. So if you go to this link below here, um, you'll be taken to the updated version of the NWS um, alert custom component, which can be installed inside of Hacks. But for today, I'm gonna show you how just to install it straight in uh, Home Assistant if you don't have Hacks installed. So first thing we need to do is pop up here to code and download the zip file like usual. And we'll go ahead and let it open up in Windows Explorer. Drag it back over here. And then we've got the National Weather Alerts Master here and the custom components in this NWS alert. So all we need to do is just copy this into our current custom components, copy it into our current custom components folder in our Home Assistant instance and then restart Home Assistant. So quickly, I'm gonna bring up my config folder, which is here. We'll go to custom components and then we're just gonna drag this NWS alerts into the custom components. Open up, make sure the files are in there that we needed. And then we can minimize those. Oops. 
and then restart Home Assistant. So this one does support configuration via the configuration.yaml, or you can go ahead and use the built-in integration manager inside of Home Assistant, which is what I'm gonna show you today. So let's go ahead and restart Home Assistant again. Okay, Home Assistant's back up now. So let's go ahead and click on configuration, integrations, hit the add integration down here, and let's search for NWS. And then we see the NWS alerts. So we can click on that and it's gonna ask us the area. So it's already assumed these zone IDs from where I currently live. Um, so if you were trying to monitor a different location, like, like the Arizona example earlier, you can paste those in here. If not, it will support more than one location. So if you wanna include a county and a zone, you can do that as well and it'll give you alerts for all those areas. So we'll click Submit and it has set up the new integration. So I can go and click on the one entity and there's the alerts right there. So it's been set up. So we can copy this, go back to overview, weather tab, gonna create a new card, and we'll just call it, a, it's just be a standard entities card. Paste in that and then hit save. So you'll notice that this has, all it really shows is a number. But if you're to click on it and go under attributes, you'll see title and display description, which will give you the extended information you need uh, to tell you what type of alert it is. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and create another one of these integrations to show you what it looks like with an active alert. So again, we'll go into here, oh, add integration. We'll go ahead and add another National Weather Service alert. And this time we're gonna jump back and go back into Arizona and find that county that had the active storm. So I'm gonna click on AZC 009 and it does show there's a severe thunderstorm watch. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that code there. We'll paste it in here and we'll call this one test alerts. And now if you look at the NWS alerts, we have two entries now. So we'll click test alerts, view that one entity, grab its name, and come back to our weather tab and add it right alongside our existing National Weather Service alerts. And now if you look, you'll see a number one, showing there's one active alert for this particular region. So I'm gonna click on this region, go down to attributes, and then there we'll see all the information we need about the particular alert. So we've got the title, which shows you what the name of the particular title of the event is, a message type alert, an event ID that you can click on and it'll send you back to um, a JSON separated version of all that data that we saw there before. And then you've got this display description, which gives you all that information. If you ever listen to a weather radio, all the information that's read out automatically when there's a weather alert. So um, what we're gonna do now is parse all this information. So one thing I will point out is if this particular region or county has more than one alert, it will always stack them. So in this case, we have a single alert. If we had two alerts, so if there was a severe thunderstorm watch and a severe weather statement, or a severe thunderstorm warning and a severe thunderstorm watch, it's always gonna put the highest danger uh, alert at the top. So that'll be the first entry we see. So if in this case, there was a severe thunderstorm wa warning that came out after this watch, you would see it would go to two, because both are still active, and then it would be severe thunderstorm warning dash severe thunderstorm watch, indicating there are two active alerts happening at the same time. So I've got some code that can be used just to parse out that specific information so you can get two variables, one to show you the title and one to show you the description. So quickly, I will show you what that code looks like and um, there'll be a link to it on the blog post below that will tell you how, uh, you can just copy and paste this in, but I'll take you through how this parses the information and some cool tricks that you can actually do with templating in Home Assistant. Let's hop back into here. So we're gonna open up our sensors.yaml. All right, so I made a little bit of room at the bottom of my sensors.yaml page, and we're gonna paste in two template sensors. Um, the first being weather alert title, and the second being weather alert description. Now these two sensors will be used to extract that information from those sensors and display them individually in Home Assistant. I've also got an if statement in here. So if we have more than one alert active at a time, it will parse the most important alert and then if there's only a single alert it'll display that particular alert and then if there's zero alerts it'll just say no alert so i'll take you through how that code works right here so it's called weather alert title the value template is an if is a nested if statement so we first part is we look here it says 
if the states of the sensor dot NWS alerts, this is the default name for each of the sensor, the uh, National Weather Service sensor. If that converted to a float, actually this should be an int, but is greater than one, so if it's not one, not zero, then it's gonna split and parse up that data so that way we can see only the first alert. All right, so for this example, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to this example in California because it will have more than one active alert. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this test alert entry that I had for Arizona. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to California since there are more than one active alerts for California. So if I go back into my overview now, now that we're looking at that county in California, you'll see three alerts. If I click on that now and go to attributes, you'll see heat advisory, excessive heat warning, heat advisory. So it's treating this heat advisory as the highest priority alert. And then if you look at the description, it's incredibly long because it has all three of those alerts nested together. So it's gonna take the, if that alert, so in this case, I'm changing this to test alert. So let's go ahead. So make sure that this matches your, the name of your entity, if it happens to be NWS alerts or test alerts or what have you. So the code I have in the, in the description here or in the blog post is set to the NWS alerts, so uh, which is the default. But just for the sakes of what we're doing here today, I've got it set to the test alert, so that way we can actually see what an output would look like if we had an, uh, multiple active alerts. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna check to see if the sensor.test alerts, if its state is greater than one. So it's converting it to a float, and if it's not a zero, and if it's not a one, since it's greater than that, greater than an equal to, that means there's two or more active alerts. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the sensor.testAlerts attribute title, which if we flip back over here, flip back over here, we'll look at the attributes title. So it's gonna take that this box for title and it's gonna parse every, it's gonna split it based on space dash space, which if you see right here is this breakpoint right here. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna break this into an array and that's gonna return one, two, three entities in that array. So it's gonna split that array into three in this particular case, and then it's gonna return the first item in that array. So the everything to the left of this delineator will be what's returned. So when we actually look at the code, it's gonna say heated, or the, the output, it's gonna say heat advisory instead of this, all this other stuff here. So that's this states.sensor.testalerts.attributes, because remember we're looking at the attributes. The name of the attribute is title. It's gonna split it based on the space, hyphen space, and then return the first entity. Then if, if our National Weather Service alerts returns greater than zero, so in this case, if it returns one, then it's going to just return the title itself. So again, states.sensor.test underscore alerts dot attributes dot title. So since there's only one entity, it's only, we're only gonna return that title instead of returning and having to parse those out. And then finally, if it's zero, or if it's some other happened to be some other variable, it's gonna return no alert, which means it's either in an error state or it's zero. So we do almost the exact same thing for the description. We're looking at the exact same variable. We're still looking if it's greater than one, so if it's two or more, but this attribute, we're looking for the display description, which if you look here, that's the name of this attribute right here. And since it's got a space in it, we have to replace that with an underscore. And again, we're gonna split it, but we're gonna split it on the word description because we don't really care about all this information up here. So it's gonna find the word description and it's gonna split it. Well, it's gonna return one, two, and then continue on for every time it finds a word description. So we care about what's happening on the right side of that description. So instead of looking for the zero entry in the array, we're looking for the one entry in the array. Then we're gonna do another split because we don't wanna just see everything else, including in up to that point where it says description. We want everything in here down to the end of this particular, into this, into the end of this particular description, which actually ends here. And the next one starts with this greater than sign. So what we're gonna do is we're going to split on that greater than sign. So again, we're gonna split on that greater than sign and then we're gonna return everything to the left of that. And that should return only the block of information for about that first most precedent alert. And again, if it's one, it just returns a description. And if it's zero, it says no alert. 
One thing I forgot to mention on the description is there is a hard limit of 255 characters in Home Assistant for any entity output um, for the actual raw sensor itself. If you have an attribute, it can be longer, but for just a raw output, it is limited to 255 characters. So as a precaution, I, this was failing for me, it's why I did this. I added in a pipe truncate 254 comma true to the end of the code and it's will be reflected on the blog post as well. That will cap the output of the um, description to 254 characters, preventing it from erroring out in Home Assistant. So um, just be aware of that, I've added that in there. So now that I've got that in place and I've restarted Home Assistant, looking at the two sensors we've created, sensor.weather underscore alert underscore title, we'll see we now have heat advisory. And then for description, we have the full text description up to 254 characters that can be read out or placed inside of a notification message. Now that we have this information here, obviously you can adapt this to your own home location and be able to send yourself alerts if there's a new particular type of alert you're looking for. You can go in and create a new automation that says, hey, if a particular alert matches a particular type of output. So, so say for example, we wanted to say, we want to see a heat advisory. We go into state sensor dot weather title. Um, and if the, if it changes to a particular state or it contains a particular word. So in this case, you know, we'd say heat advisory. Then you could have it send a notification here. You could have it read a text to speech out loud, which is what I do in my house for certain things. Um, but you could create any type of custom action based on that, or you could clear this out entirely and then create a nested conditions to say if it's tornado warning or tornado watch or severe thunderstorm warning or severe thunderstorm watch, then do something. Or if it's all those things and in between the hours of seven and seven, then read those out loud using my text-to-speech engine on, say, Home Assistant. So that's how I do that on my um, Google Homes. They'll read out the alerts as we go. Um, I will have all those example code pieces in my in the blog post after the fact. Um, it's just so customizable, I don't want to necessarily include it in here for you. Uh, but please refer to the blog post for all that example code, including the examples of how to have it doing text-to-speech if there's a particular type of alert. So I, I recommend if I just have an automation that says, if that title equals tornado warning, then no matter the time of the day, it will it will turn on the Google Homes, send them the full volume, and read out that alert and the description, and also turn on my lights in the hallway, in the basement, turn the TV on in the basement, all those sort of things. So we wake up to the sound of the sirens going off. Um, the Google Homes will be reading out the notification message. Hey, there's a tornado warning. Seek shelter. Here's the information about it turns on all the lights so we can go grab the kids, head down to the basement, and it's all done in one nice automation package so we don't have to worry about doing those things. We can just focus on getting to the basement safely. So again, please make sure you look at the blog post. It has a lot of the example code that you need in there, but at least it shows you what's capable in Home Assistant. And before I pop out, I'll show you what my particular uh, weather chart looks like. So I have the, this is on my live Home Assistant instance. I've got a regional weather map. I've got the local weather map. I've got a wind information card, which is a custom card that you can integrate, which I will put that in the blog post as well. Uh, a couple of those um, nice graphical charts that I've had, uh, I talked about in the cryptocurrency video. I have those set to the outside temperature and humidity. Uh, this is that new uh, sunrise sunset card uh, that they've been talking about. That's a custom component. And then the cloud coverage, and it's all based out of the, uh, the weather information. So I use the dark sky forecast, like I stated before, but you can pull this information out of Weather Underground or um, Open Weather Map as well. So um, there you go. I hope that gives you some great ideas of what to try for in your Home Assistant instance. Um, give you some kind of a, uh, another depth of information you can add to Home Assistant. And hopefully it'll be helpful to you and maybe um, prove, prove to be an extra safety layer. Um, to, if there's a weather alert in your area, you don't happen to have your phone around you can get that information sent right directly to you, which is kind of the point of a smart home, um, that it kind of thinks for you and gives you the information you need at your fingertips. So if you did find this video helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, also make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more videos and ring the notification bell uh, to be notified about all my new videos coming out the rest of the summer. I uh, hope everybody's had, still having a great summer, had a great 4th of July weekend, and stay cool during these exceptionally hot times, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.